and welcome to All Samoanem. Like many other countries, 60% of Papua New Guinea's population consists of youths. According to the Urban Youth in the Pacific, a youth is defined as someone between the ages of 12 to 25. Majority of youths in Papua New Guinea face various challenges in terms of unemployment, inaccessibility of services, lack of financial support, HIV AIDS and other social issues. Papua New Guinea has a national youth policy 2007 to 2017, but the policy was never implemented in the country. Well, the youth policy from 2007 to 2017 hasn't been achieved. There's nine pillars that is included in the youth policy, but not one of them have been achieved. And this year, for instance, uh, the Youth Commission has been an advisory, um, has set an advisory role to the government. So it hasn't had the ability to do programs in the provinces. However, this year, it was reviewed and the act is now, it becomes an authority, the Youth Commission, therefore giving arms and legs to it for it to be able to do programs in um, the provinces. So because of that, I think that it hasn't, the youth programs and the policy hasn't been achieved. But yeah, we have two more years until the youth policy ends and evaluation hasn't been done yet of the youth policy. The key policy areas in the National Youth Policy of Papua New Guinea are improving the quality of young people's lives, two, accessing integrated education, three, nurturing sustainable livelihoods, four, promoting healthy lifestyles, five, building stronger communities by promoting full participation of young people in decision making. Six, strengthening institutional capacity. Seven, youth and identities. Research information and data collection on youth. Nine, law, order and justice. Diane Kambane is the General Secretary of the Young Women's Christian Association and was a panelist at the first Global Youth Forum this year. She highlighted the need for young people to be included in policy formulation and evaluation and the issues young people face in PNG. Okay, so the first Global Youth Forum on Youth Policies was held in Baku, Azerbaijan and that was um, coordinated with by U UNESCO, UNDP, the Ministry of Sports and Youth in Azerbaijan and that brought together 700 participants, 115 youth ministers from 165 countries and that was three days just talking about this very issue of including young people in policy making and comparing how different countries have or have not achieved uh, their youth policy. Some young people get involved in crime and violence, but there is massive potential for youth to contribute to the development of PNG. But certain challenges prevent them from accessing services that will empower them. Oh my God, sell say, I'm saying, multi-nine bell blow, how about lip blow, most of the No one line by Gim Kaya Lol, even anti angle, open or continue, I'm not feeding them. How I'm stopping and panning on survive blow and I'm stopping them. So, I'm not leaving them. Some blood, I'm not at school. Some plus, I'm just around the street, nothing. So, only hope I'm just a market, I'm just a leaf, something, I'm just a chimney, I'm feeding bell blow me plan. Because some blood, my problem, I'm trying to hold them. All stop, nothing. No, I walk blow, some blood, people all stop. So through the middle beginning the song, Mr. Pining again, I go feed all my problem, the family loan blood, no such stuff. Market animals, phones, flex card, telecard, uh, top card, na, all right card, or make more lily profit number of pass pen about go to school, go come, Kage Labinun, finding some of lily money in a bottle.
policies, uh, young people have to be involved in policy that is impacting them, in programs, they have to be involved in all aspects of policies, education, women's policy, what not, they must, their voices must be heard. Um, there should be a youth council, or a youth council is actually one of the um, recommendations or the actions of the youth um, policy that says that they're going to set up a youth council and that has to be set up because at that level that they'll, they'll be able to address or um, advise government on issues that are affecting young people in the country. Chairman of the Kumul Game Changer, Anthony Smare, spoke to All Sam Wanem during the Kumul Game Changer event on how youths of Papua New Guinea can unlock their business potential. We also highlight the influence that communities have on youths. Most young people are not given the opportunity to voice their opinion. Julie Badui Owa with this story. Young people make up almost half of Papua New Guinea's population and include an inadequate part of the urban unfortunate. Many young people are leaving school without acquiring the skills needed to find employment. They find the changeover from school to work and adulthood increasingly difficult. This has lessened their ability to positively contribute to nation building. Most youth are left without the opportunity to voice their opinions and a chance to commit to a positive youth-oriented organization. We're citing people of all ages. And usually when you encounter a problem, people immediately start thinking about how they can solve their problem. So this is an opportunity for young people to come up with a solution and put it forward. And they don't have to have the education, they don't have to be working, they don't have to have you know, the achievements of somebody else to be able to come up with a brilliant idea and put it forward. And the great thing about our program is that we are interested in the idea. We don't care how old you are, how young you are, whether you're a man or a woman, whether you're very successful or you're, uh, you know, or you're in the village. If the idea is good enough, then we want you to apply to put your idea in so that we can select it. And if we select it, then we will invest in you. So I think for a young person who wants to really become an entrepreneur, it's a phenomenal opportunity for them. So what we'll do, when we select your idea, we will invest in you. We'll bring you to Port Moresby. We'll put you through a program which will teach you how to run a business, how to take an idea and make it a reality. And, um, you know, once we put, give you all those skills and we empower you as an entrepreneur, no matter how your age, if you're a young person, you can take that idea and make it successful. When you make it successful, you can make money, you can you can impact your community, you can actually become a person of great standing in your community. I think you cannot wait for people to tell you how to live your life or to tell you when you can make a change or when you can improve your life. Ultimately, it's a decision for each of us. Do we want to live like this for the rest of our life or do we want our life to be better? If we want our life to be better, we can't wait for somebody else to make it better. We have to make it better ourselves. Young people are a valuable resource. They are citizens who have the rights like the adults, including the right to their own opinions and views. They should have opportunities to express their views in all aspects of life. They should be heard and respected. On the part of the society generally, and uh, leaders uh, in particular, I think we are promoting a bad type of uh, culture in our young people, especially uh, in terms of uh, human rights uh, respect and promotion of uh, you know, people's dignity and welfare, we are promoting a, a culture of violence, a, a culture of machoism in young men especially, uh, who are not respecting themselves and respecting you know, their community and uh, they are promoting uh, culture and machoism or aggressiveness. Uh, and this is done in a number of ways. Um, you know, by society generally resorting to violence as a means of dispute resolution, we reinforce the culture in our young people. When observing the business and media world, 
It is seen that most advanced and innovative discoveries come from young people. Therefore, it is every individual's aim to promote ways to help youth in becoming more actively involved in making positive contributions for the betterment of the society. Important views on truth, integrity, meaning, justice, morality, and ethics are formed at this early stage of life. If children and youth are reached and supported when their life views are being shaped, it will set them on a road that cannot be easily moved. More than 25 mathematics professors from around the world gathered at the University of Goroka this week for the second international conference on pure and applied mathematics. The conference was aimed at increasing the level of mathematics teaching and learning in PNG schools. Sylvester Gawi attended this conference during the week and finds out about the usefulness of this conference. The Mathematics Society of Papua New Guinea and the University of Goroka jointly organized this international conference on pure and applied mathematics. The main objective of this conference was to develop and increase the level of mathematics teaching and learning in primary, secondary and tertiary institutions in Papua New Guinea. Mathematics education at school level as well as in universities needs improvement. So. Dr. Basil Marasins is the Dean of Science and Technology at the University of Goroka. He says the conference brought together over 25 maths professors from around the world to present the research papers to our local participants. Papua New Guinea, between 2010 and 2013, there was a reduction in the total number of students taking uh, mathematics A or major maths from 57% to 28%. So there is this responsibility and the challenge of the education department proper, major department looking after education in this country, to make sure that a lot of our students from elementary to primary through to secondary can be challenged further and be part of an innovative society using technology and mathematics that is available to us. Apart from having national conference on mathematics in PNG, this was the second time an international conference was held to improve the standard of maths in our schools. To improve the mathematics education in Papua New Guinea. Uh, as we know, this, uh, the level of mathematics education in schools as well as in universities needs improvement. So these experts, as well as our uh, experts coming from Papua New Guinea, will help us to uh, uh, find some uh, answers uh, to improve the mathematics education in this country. The Mathematics Society of Papua New Guinea was formed about a year before the first maths conference was held at the University of Technology in Ley in 2013. During that conference, maths professors have suggested for a complete degree program for maths teachers to be introduced at universities and colleges. University of Goroka took on that idea and founded a complete degree program for math students and the program will start in its 2015 academic year. In this conference, the majority of the delegates and the uh, papers are also presented by the mathematical experts coming from other countries the foreign countries. In addition, of course, our own Papua New Guineans also will present papers, but majority of the papers are from uh, mathematicians from uh, United States, Canada, Europe, Africa, Asia, Australia, South Pacific, and of course, Papua New Guinea. Governor General His Excellency Sir Michael Ogio 
officiated at the opening of the conference and called on participants to learn as much as they can from the overseas presenters. St. Michael was the Minister for Higher Education before becoming the Governor General of Papua New Guinea. During his term, he instructed for the Science and Technology Initiative to be introduced in 2008. Through that initiative, millions of kina were granted for research in universities. It is time that everybody takes mathematics seriously. I challenge universities to produce more good mathematicians in spite of our gains in many fields there are some areas in which we need to do better there is room for improvement in mathematics education in this country from primary lower secondary and upper secondary to the tertiary level. The conference will not only improve the level of mathematics in Papua New Guinea, but will also pave way for the country to take part in mathematics Olympiads with other universities worldwide. Oh, there has been so much talk recently in the media about the low standards of mathematics in Papua New Guinea, and school syllabus have been changed one after another without any real change in the standard of mathematics alone. It has been observed that anyone who is a good student in mathematics and English is also a good student in almost all other subjects. Mathematics helps us to quantify, calculate, and do measurements, and it helps to develop analytical and critical thinking and more importantly, logical reasoning. Therefore, anyone who is good in mathematics is able to become a good engineer, or a good medical doctor, or a good scientist, or even a good lawyer, or an accountant, or an economist, or almost all other professions necessary for scientific and technological advancement of this nation. Presenters have also suggested for Papua New Guineans to utilize modern technology to improve on areas lagging in mathematics teaching and learning. The International Mathematics Conference also looked at ways in reviving ethnomathematics in Papua New Guinea. Before the inventions of algebra and calculus, Papua New Guineans were also using traditional methods to develop patterns, designs, and calculations. Six years ago, the University of Goroka established an ethnomathematics center to revive these techniques in our schools. Ethno or cultural mathematics existed in Papua New Guinea about 50,000 years ago. The traditional methods used in calculations and design of buildings and artifacts have proven that Papua New Guineans are some of the first people to invent mathematics. Egyptian invented algebra and Indians invented calculus. Papua New Guinea also had their own mathematics. For their calculation, they used some mathematics. Six years ago, the Ethno Mathematics Center was established at the University of Goroka to collate information and statistics of the heli methods of counting in Papua New Guinea. 
Dr. K. Owens is among professors who are working towards reinventing cultural mathematics in PNG. When Glenn Lean finished his work, which took him 22 years, collating all the number systems, uh, how people counted in Papua New Guinea, which are quite varied and quite unique, uh, he passed away but his executor sent the materials up to the University of Goroka with Dr. Wilfred Kaleva and with Dr. Solon's help and uh, Dr. Masawi Sinabare and Rex Matang, the late Rex Matang, mm -hmm. they set up the centre here and we just uh, came up here and helped them to collate all of that material and catalogue it all so that we actually knew exactly how much was there. And Pioneer so researchers like Professor Rex Matang have been instrumental in establishing the Glen Lin Ethnomathematics Research Centre. The late Professor Rex Matang did a study that concentrates on how school children are learning basic arithmetics in schools. Rex Matang uh, did a very important study where he looked at how children were learning basic uh, curriculum from uh, the basic of arithmetic at schools and he took some children who had learnt in talk place, some children who had learnt just in English and others who'd learnt in a mixture, and he found that although the children who'd learnt only in English, and they were probably a select group who actually spoke English at home too. The week-long international conference on pure and applied mathematics has also discussed the reinvention of the traditional methods of mathematics in Papua New Guinea. At the School of Science and Technology of the University of Goroka, we have set up a mathematics uh, research centre we call Ethnomathematics Research Centre. In that centre, uh, the researchers now are working to discover or rediscover the mathematics we had in uh, Papua New Guinea. Uh, that is the uh, objective, the third objective of this conference. The University of Goroka is working to ensure these traditional methods are revived and introduced into the education curriculum in PNG. This will see young children learning mathematics from the elementary level, primary, high school, and to secondary and tertiary institutions. It will also help young children to learn and appreciate the richness of the cultures and traditions. I think if the teachers are well trained and really appreciate how to use bilingual education and um, other methods for teaching mathematics and just knowing some of the theoretical things that have been put together uh, around the world about how children learn mathematics, it will be much stronger for our children in elementary schools and then that will throw, flow through to high school and to university. So it's getting the basics of the concepts but appreciating the richness of their own home cultures and the ways of thinking and making that comparison between home and school can be very strong and rich. His Excellency Governor General of Papua New Guinea, Sir Michael Ogio, says books have been written about the traditional use of plants in PNG. All these have shown the outstanding contributions made by NCN Papua New Guineans in the field of medicine. And he is happy to see a research centre being established to rediscover cultural mathematics. I am glad to hear that measures have been taken to, redis to rediscover Papua New Guinea mathematics by setting up an ethno-mathematic research center here at the University of Goroka. Traditional costumes, designs and patterns are all evidences of ethno-mathematics in Papua New Guinea. The methods of calculations and counting are unique with the 800 different tribes and cultures. I think to make the rest of the Papua New Guinea aware of the ethno-mathematics, the richness of the ethno-mathematics, and to um, bring that into schools, to strengthen the teacher education as well, will be great, and for teachers just to appreciate some of the uh, approaches. So we've been um, holding some workshops for teachers around the country, for elementary teachers in particular, and in order to help them. And at the University of Goroka there is a subject where secondary teachers look at the mathematics of their cultures and link that to the high school curriculum. With the focus now on increasing the level of mathematics education in PNG, ethno-mathematics is the first step. 
Mathematicians want teachers to be highly qualified and can be able to use modern technology to enhance learning at all levels of education. The national government and other stakeholders and universities are also putting their resources together to increase the level of mathematics education, science, research and technology in Papua New Guinea. And that's all we have time for. Thank you to all who have participated in this week's edition of All Sem 1M. Join us same time next week. Until then, keep your comments and stories coming to the address on your screen or visit our Facebook page. For now, enjoy the rest of your viewing here on your number one station, MTV.